this is uh, the f this is the first uh, implementation or installation of security in 30. Uh, the intent and concept is that in in a 30 minute period we have um, a quick overview of um, subject solution topics around uh, specific security uh, efforts. So we're going to start out with uh, vulnerability management. Uh, my name is Bryce Schroeder. I'm the Senior Director of Systems Engineering for Tripwire. Uh, and we're going to talk about vulnerability management and specifically about Tripwire's vulnerability management solution, uh, IP360. Uh, we'll be uh, running through this pretty rapidly in terms of capability. Please feel free. Um, we're going to hold uh, for now um, all of the uh, questions until the end, um, and we will use your time well, and uh, hopefully you'll learn something, and, uh, and hopefully I will too. It'll be a good, good time and good session. So let's take off and really get started. So what is vulnerability, excuse me, what is vulnerability management? Um, let's talk about um, how it works, uh, and then uh, importantly, obviously for us, is, is why Tripwire uh, is the, the best enterprise solution for vulnerability management. So let's get started. What is really vulnerability management? So we all know with the threat landscape that's out there, there are folks who are um, out there really trying to find ways in on a regular basis, whether it's via port scans, end map sessions, um, a variety of different attack methods to really find ways into uh, our computer systems from outside in the internet and even inside of our environments themselves. So the whole concept of vulnerability management is to really look into that process by doing a level of discovery, um, understanding and how to prioritize the things that are discovered in terms of uh, vulnerabilities um, and, and, and prioritization meaning, you know, what's most important um, once discovered to go remediate and fix and then get some analytics. Are we getting better? Uh, are things getting worse? Is that, that, that trend uh, in terms of how it's happening either intrinsic or intrinsic to my environment? In other words, are new issues being discovered that are coming from outside uh, because we're finding new vulnerabilities in our world? Or are they intrinsic? Is it things that are happening into my environment um, that, are, that are causing uh, issues either because um, new trends or new systems are being put in place? So let's discover and, and walk through those, those three items as we, as we go through those. So the first piece that's in that mix is really around um, starting around the critical security controls. So the SANS organization um, really kind of pioneered this in the last two years around coming out with these ranked order um, security and risk framework um, around what's most important and how do we go remediate first. Uh, and those, those came into what was called the SANS uh, CSC 20. Um, and we're going to focus really on, on the top four and specifically um, the three of the top four around critical system or security control one, two, and four. Um, and those are around inventory and discovery of hardware assets, uh, their criticality and location. Um, then also the software content of what's on those hardware assets. Uh, in terms of being able to profile, discover, and really understand what that device is, what it does, uh, and therefore what it might be vulnerable to. Um, and then the, the key element that's there at the bottom is around the vulnerability assessment and remediation. How do we take that information about what is there, hardware and software, and then really put it into a way that we can systematically um, drive risk and add security uh, into our environment in a very concise and consistent way. So the other piece that's uh, more of a, more of a, just a transition piece, because I found that a lot of folks don't actually understand how this works, is SANS uh, came up and started this um, along with uh, NSA's uh, ranking of, of the controls or what's important. But in the course of the last several months, um, SANS has hand, handed off the uh, critical security control list from SANS uh, to a new organization called the Council on Cybersecurity. And the Council on Cybersecurity um, 
run by two folks that were founders in the SANS organization, Jane Lute, who is the former uh, director of Homeland Security, um, and uh, Tony Sager, who was uh, 35 years uh, at the NSA as uh, uh, director in charge, um, are now uh, the, the founding members in the Council of Cybersecurity, and it is a multinational organization to really kind of drive this framework in terms of, of how we go about uh, reducing risk and increasing security across the board. So let's talk about discovery a little bit, changing topics, uh, going from our history lesson into more of what's real and what's now, um, and that is CVEs. So vulnerabilities and exposures, or CVEs, are actually um, logged, tracked, and given criticality information uh, and documented um, on MITRE. Uh, and MITRE is kind of the the overall uh, owner of the, the larger picture of what's in place. And there is a difference. Vulnerability is really around a mistaken software that can be used, uh, and the key is can be used, may not be, um, but when it is actually used, um, that is when a vulnerability moves to an, into an exposure uh, in terms of what's in place. And so it's really important that we find out what these vulnerabilities and exposures are so that we can remove those from our environment and therefore reduce, reduce the threat and attack vectors that the folks that are outside are trying to use. So let's talk really kind of at a really basic level um, about di what discovery is. So remember from the SANS conversation that we had previously, um, we're really looking to do a discovery of what's out there from a hardware asset standpoint. So the hardware assets, we're, we're going to go out and we're going to do a, a scan of our environment and we're going to actually find out um, what's out there. Most of those assets, we hope, are things that we already know. Uh, and the IP addresses, whether they're network switches or routers or um, storage filer devices or firewalls or uh, hosts, uh, endpoints or all the rest are out and in our environment. And we keep a list of all those things um, and create a, a list of, uh, of common assets and uh, and profiles in our in our environment, but also the more important piece, again, looking back to that SANS top one most critical security element, is also finding out what we don't know about. What else has come onto our network? What might be in our uh, DMZ, as uh, illustrated by the picture down there at the bottom, um, and, and what may have been added in into maybe our, our wireless or uh, our WAN uh, infrastructure or environment um, that we don't know or don't uh, see from the previous time that we've gone and taken a look, whether that's on a daily, uh, every other day, weekly, or monthly basis. And then once we've discovered those pieces, prioritization. So a series of reports about what's most important, what's out. Um, these are examples of some of the reports that are generated uh, in common industry uh, capabilities around uh, vulnerability lists. Uh, and how to go look at those. Uh, and, and by the way, it's, it's uh, pretty, pretty standard in terms of, of putting those out, and our CBE scores are actually listed uh, in the MITRE page, uh, usually on a case of 1 to 10, high to low. Uh, and then analyze, and these are examples of some of the analyzing pieces that are out. They usually have a trend line um, around uh, trends around specific time frames, and uh, most of us, including Tripwire, uh, have the ability to go look at those in different ways and methods. Uh, and it's important. Uh, it's important that you know that you're, you're getting better, that you're making progress, and that your stance is always improving. Um, pretty, pretty easy, uh, straightforward around uh, CVE severity and report capabilities. So let's, let's really jump in really quick um, into why Tripwire. So if we take those same kind of pieces around discovery, prioritization, and analyze, let's look at uh, Tripwire's key uh, value-added pieces of, of what these look like. So looking at that, we really kind of walk into uh, three real distinctive capabilities. And they, they really um, lend themselves into uh, three categories. It's around um, automation, being able for you to set up and automate the way your discovery and uh, scan infrastructure works. Um, it's around the ability to really put that in your own business context. Um, and, and then really the, the last piece is 
around enterprise integration. How do you use that information to put it into the rest of your security infrastructure? Vulnerability management is, is, is one control in one of many to, to create a, a fully blown uh, security and risk framework. So we think, at least in the vulnerability space, that we are your best enterprise choice with that. And that really is that we have a breadth of offerings, um, both in hardware appliances, but also in a virtual appliance place, and also in cloud infrastructure so that you can mix and match um, your data set and your needs to the way your enterprise is configured and architected um, so that we, an, we can adapt and give you good telemetry uh, into what's happening in your vulnerability management space. But then there's the other piece of this, which is really around our research and knowledge. And we have uh, one of the best uh, teams working on this in the industry, and we call that the VERT team. Uh, and the VERT team is the Vulnerability and Exposure Response Team. They are a group of experts that are combing the network on a regular basis, looking at vulnerabilities and exploits, um, doing the remediation instruction componentry, and really walking through what does this mean, how do we get it out there faster, how do we give it to you in such a way um, that not only do you detect and discover, but you rapidly are able to remediate with really good instructions and specific instances on how to get rid of that vulnerability, not just in one place, but again, back to our automation conversation across all of the infrastructure that has that same profile or same exposure or vulnerability capability. And we do that not just on operating systems, but all the way up the stack. Um, from network infrastructure and hardware devices, databases, uh, middleware and application levels, and even up through uh, OWASP and the rest of the web application uh, capabilities. So all the way through your environment, not just at the operating system or hardware level, all of the settings that go all the way through the application stack. So let's keep going with that. What does that look like? Why is it interesting? So that's really our key element. Let's talk about that security control number four, or cybersecurity, whether or SANS, and really talk about how we do vulnerability management. We want to make sure that when we find an open door or an open place, um, that we give it to you in a, in a way that provides value to you as an organization. And one of the ways that we do that is instead of a standard CVE score, we actually give you the ability to see that in a different manner. We will give you CVEs, but we'll also give you the ability to rank and rate um, the criticality of that potential CVE based on how easy it is to exploit. It's automation. We do that detection of whether there are script kiddies and um, automated exploit capability already out uh, in the hacker marketplace and then rate that also on the other scale, which is along the bottom, around will it give access and privilege at a high level, not just on the current system or host that's vulnerable, but is there a potential that that would give remote access and data incursion capability across my entire network? That's our severity rating in terms of rate and rank, and we put it in a heat map fashion. So let's talk about really quick about critical areas around discovery and why Tripwire um, is, is your best choice for that. Um, and that's really around a couple of pieces. This, this is really hard to read chart, and I apologize for it being so small. But we do what we call profiling versus scanning. We do an initial discovery. Um, of what is in place, but then we actually walk through the application stack and operating system stack and do what we call a stack fingerprint. So we're, we are a, a complete and um, succinct view of your system, but we're doing it in such a way that we're tracking and tracing all of the parameters of what's on your system from the hardware and IP level all the way through the application stack, and we use that as a stack fingerprint to discover and understand the device, not just at the IP and Mac layer, but all the way through the application stack. We actually look for an enormous number of conditions. Um, we are way past uh, 80,000. I think we're nearing the 90,000 piece. And we're looking not only for vulnerabilities, again, in the operating system, but all the way through the application uh, database layer and uh, plugins that go into the, the piece. And then we do very, very extensive and comprehensive scan profiles. Uh, and, and it's harder to see on this, but 
but that is the key piece. We, we are looking to make a very complete view um, of each and every asset that's in the environment. Key element also is data resides on your premise. Um, it's not exported outside, uh, so if there's no chance of escapement um, from, from uh, folks that may be hosting your content in other places. And then the other piece is dynamic host tracking, unique capability that we have that gives you the ability as we walk into our mobile world of laptops and handhelds where systems will walk from one enterprise to the next. You need to keep context of your, not just your asset or your IP, but also that the device itself has moved, perhaps from one division to the next, so you can maintain context of analysis uh, at the reporting lever. We provide that in an automated way that preserves your business continuity and context. So on, let's talk about prioritization really quick. So traditional vulnerability CVE scores go from low to high, one to 10, um, and we do provide that same capability in terms of, of what's in place. The, the concern or problem that we've seen with that though is that it tends to be um, uh, very hard. You get lots and lots of tens, lots of highs uh, from a vulnerability standpoint. So it makes it extremely hard uh, if you have a separation between your security and operations team to actually phrase that in ways that they understand what's the most important thing to do first in terms of putting patches in or fixing port configurations or whatever that particular instruction looks like. So what we do is we give that scoring on a much uh, more granular scale. Actually, it goes from zero to 150,000 uh, plus, and it's based not just on how easy that exploit is or its impact, um, but also in business context. What's the criticality of the asset that it's on? Have you already identified that that has critical data that's critical to your infrastructure or the transactions that are in your environment? And if you have, how do we map that into your score so that you keep um, context of what's most important, and you can give that in an automated fashion to your operations team to go fix. In other words, how do we make sure that you communicate well? That's really what we're trying to go do. Um, the other piece that's really important um, is we keep track of all of the vulnerability information that's happened on a historic fashion and we give it to you in a business analytics context on something we call focus. Uh, focus is trademarked and patented, and what it does is it keeps track of your scan information so that you can do what ifs. If a zero day comes out, and the zero day is something new and, we, and, and none of the um, vulnerability providers have classified what its uh, potential is or given actual remediation detection or scan profiles for it, um, you can actually take your existing information um, and detect whether or not you are at risk. Uh, case in point on, on the ones that I've shown here is around vulnerabilities with like the IE issue that, that uh, came out uh, several weeks ago. Um, Focus allowed our customer base to actually go and determine where do I have um, systems that are running Windows with Internet Explorer and Adobe products already installed with specific versions and revisions and literally determine what's my exposure and risk before a scan occurs again and before the actual vulnerability uh, profile was, was published. Critical information. Same is true with Heartbleed. And, and Heartbleed not only on operating systems, um, specifically to Linux or web servers, but also Heartbleed capability or detection on routers and switches that most of their uh, admin consoles are running uh, with open SSL profiles. Really important information gives you more data uh, in advance without having to do scans, but leveraging the data that you've already captured in your environment to really get a better handle and a better effort uh, around how to go uh, remediate and fix it. And then the last piece I want to walk through is really around the analytics, and that is contextual information in your business context. And then the critical point is whether the audience is executive, whether it's an audit or a compliance piece who want it in a different format, whether it's you and the security team that you've got around risk and exposure and actually looking at detailed information for that, or whether it's the IT operations piece, we maintain linkage. All of our reporting capability is live, and it connects 
from each of the pieces, each of these is a live chart, the executive piece can be drilled down into to walk into either the audit and compliance operations or security view such that you maintain that same continuity of information uh, and you don't lose the communication. You can talk in whoever's lingo they want, whether it's operations with give me the patch and the remediation instruction that's there, and you can trace it all the way back to how much better it will give or what the response will be at the executive level in terms of my overall trend or spark line. Um, so very important because you need to have the information you've got, but you need to show that it's actually making a difference as you walk through the vulnerability uh, life cycle and are actually driving uh, vulnerabilities and exposures out of your environment. So that's that's really kind of the, the picture of what's in place. And this, this shows the next kind of step of what that is. This shows on the lower uh, left chart a different set of operational groups, whether that's uh, sales or finance or manufacturing, inside of an organization. Each of them has their own security profile and stance. And then this chart is shown a click on the purple line that then brings up that one particular point in time um, heat map of what's most important, what's most done at that point. And at each point in that line, you can get succinct, uh, clear information of what that environment looks like and show how it trends along over time and how things are getting better and even allow perhaps a little competition between the different business units inside your environment as you display the charts uh, into the executive team. So that's it. Um, uh, that's the wrap in terms of where we're at. It's, it's really IP360. We believe we have the best, uh, most robust enterprise vulnerability management solution on the market. It covers discovery, uh, really being able to find out what's in your environment and more importantly, what you didn't know is on your environment. Uh, it covers the analytics portion. How do I know? Um, that I've got really good contextual information uh, and I'm knowing that I'm doing the most important things first. Uh, and then really the prioritization uh, portion of that, which is providing you information, not just in terms of CVE scores, um, but really uh, ranking things in ways that make most sense to you um, and gives you the ability to provide business context into that ranking by adding criticality of asset into that mix. Um, so that's, that's our, uh, our session for today. Uh, security in 30, all around uh, Tripwire IP360 and vulnerability management. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, I'm willing to, to answer anything that you've got from a question standpoint. Great. It uh, doesn't sound like there are any questions on the, on the call. I thank you all very much for your time. Uh, appreciate the, the, you joining the call today and look forward to the next opportunity uh, to chat. Take care. Bye-bye.